Winter Dragons, a Lake Scatterwood Tales short story for middle grade readers by Jay Wilburn. If you like what you read, check out the Lake Scatterwood Tales books. There are two chapter book stories in each book. Crazy things are always happening at Lake Scatterwood. All right, so let's see if we can do something with this idea of Winter Dragons. Now, in the actual books, um, it focuses on four kids at the camp during the summer, and they usually face off with some sort of creature or monster or or thing and uh, very light adventure stories, uh, not heavy horror. Um, there's maybe a little bit of suspense in them, but it's very, very light perils. So kind of a, a much softer uh, goosebumps type thing and much, much easier to read. Uh, these short stories typically cover other things, sometimes from the view of the uh, magical creatures themselves. Sometimes the kids are there and uh, the, the creatures kind of interact with them or... Um, will kind of sneak around behind them sometimes the stories will do like a little side tale uh, off from the main story that's going on in the books so you get a little bit of a different view i just kind of try to have fun with these so we'll see what we can do with winter dragons the glowing eggs gave off steam where they had settled in the snow. There was a wide brown patch of ground where the eggs had melted the snow around them. Now they twitched. They hopped a little. I don't know why that looked weird to me for a moment, but it did. They hopped a little. Then they started to crack, even though it was the middle of winter. First one small dragon emerged. Ooh, I can't spell either. That's not going to be great for this story. First one small dragon emerged, breaking the shell of its egg apart. Right, let's spell egg correctly. Breaking the shell of its egg apart as it crawled free. The other dragon had to use its teeth to break the sh break its shell open wider before have I used the word escape? No. Before he could escape. So it took the second dragon a little bit longer. First dragon hatchling Spotted something sparkly at the edge of the snow. It ran forward to investigate and found the two name tags. This was a big decision. Um, so he considered each name carefully as his brother st 
still struggled. Okay, I got two hisses in there. As his brother struggled. with his egg. The first dragon chose the name Cory. And slipped the chain of the golden tag over his head and around his neck. Finally, his brother fought his way free. That was harder than I expected it to be. Tom Duffy, welcome, sir, and congratulations on the release of Zodiac. I'm hearing things, so it sounds good, man. Finally, his brother fought his way free. That was harder than I expected. It's cold out here. What's going on? It must still be winter, Corey said. That happens sometimes. The other dragon dragon stretched and shook. We were born in winter. That's terrible. We'll figure it out, Corey said. Get your name tag on. <clears throat> Hopefully not hearing things like, I read better stories from first graders. Hey, even bad reviews sell books, man. The, wor the worst you can hear is silence. Although that would not be, the, the first grader comment would not be the best either. Uh, we'll figure it out, Corey said. Get your name tag on and let's look for some place warm. And something to eat. Name tags. The second dragon moved forward, but only found one option. Dabble. I don't like that name. Switch with me. Okay, hold on. What? I'm already wearing mine. I'm Corey. It's too late. Put it on. We can just switch though. The second dragon said, I think I'm more of a quarry and a dabble. Just switch. That's crazy. I'm already Cory. We can't 
can't have two Corys. Just put your name tag on and let's go. The second second dragon. All right, the second dragon ducked its head into the remaining tag. He had to stick his nose in the snow to get it. Tabble didn't like that. Corey Corey said I see some buildings down that way. Dabble. Let's go see if we can find some food. Buildings mean people. Dabble said. We're supposed we're supposed to stay away from people. Corey scratched at the scales under his chin and said We'll be careful. Let's go. We can't stay out in the cold like this. Why are we here alone? Dabble asked. Where's our mother? Dragon Mother's leave, and we have to survive on our own, Corey said. How do you know that? We were just born. Corey tilted his head at his brother and blinked a couple times. Some animals are just born already knowing things. We can read our name tags, and we know we are dragons. Well, of course we know we're dragons, Dabble said. What else would we be? Are you sure you don't want to switch names? We 
It's Don Dabble. Get over it already. I also know it is cold out here. So let's go. They moved down the hill together, leaving sets of their tracks behind them in the snow. Stepping out of the woods, the snow was deeper and a frozen lake stretched out before them, below them. Several buildings with snow on their roofs. Stood dark and quiet out in the open. I don't see any people, Corey said. Dabble shook his head. They could still be there. Maybe sleeping. It's daytime. It's daytime, Corey said. And I don't hear any people either. They could be hiding. People are tricky like that. I don't smell them either. So if there were people here, they've been gone a long time. I don't like this. Dabble said. I don't like any of it. Corey rolled his eyes, but then tracked out into the snow. Dabble followed. door to the largest building was locked. Corey said, I'm going to use fire on it. Don't do that. Why not? You'll burn the whole place down. Right. Good thinking. Okay. I'll see 
what I can do with my claws. Corey was about to give up, but then the door popped open. The dragons, the dragons went inside. It was almost as cold in there as it was outside. There were several tables with the chairs stacked on top. But nothing moved. smells like human in here, uh, Dabble said. Smells like young humans. Those are the worst kind. Corey said, It's an old smell. They probably left before it snowed. There's a fireplace over there and wood beside it. Let's start a fire. Someone might see the smoke. Well, I'm not going to freeze to death because I am afraid of smoke. They stacked the wood inside and started a big fire easily with their burning breath. Let's find some food, Corey said. Dabble sniffed around. I don't smell any of that. Well, we should try. We should try anyway. They found a kitchen. Fridge and freezers were propped open and unplugged. They were empty, but the room was already almost cold enough that a fridge wasn't needed. The fire was warming the, not warning, warming the big room slowly. Then the young 
Dragon Brothers opened a pantry. It was almost empty too, but there were cans of beans. They tried to claw them open, then trying to bite the tops off the cans. Then tried to bite the tops off the cans. Um, they dented the cans, but couldn't open them. All right. What do we do? Corey asked. Dabble said, I don't get it. Humans have no claws, and their teeth aren't nearly as sharp as ours. They aren't very strong especially the young ones that stunk up this place how are they opening these cans. That's brilliant, Corey said. They must have some kind of tool. The dragons searched the drawers and tried all the knives, forks, spoons, and whisks, but nothing opened the cans. They found the can opener, but it took them several tries to figure out how it worked. I have a lizard in my office that um, somehow got in here and um, He's gotten kind of bold where he keeps running out and then running back uh, up under the shelf. And um, I keep uh, expecting... What am I seeing there? That's the wheel to the chair. I keep expecting to uh, accidentally roll over him, so I'm trying to be careful in here. Uh, also, I don't really want him climbing on me or anything, but he seems to be scared enough that when I he sees that I see him, he runs away. So I don't I don't know what's going to happen with this with this uh, lizard. He's, he's a little fast. I don't think I'm going to be able to get him outside. So maybe this is just his home now, and I I borrow it from time to time. They found the can opener, but it took them several tries to figure out how it worked. They got the beans open, cooked them with their breath. and ate all the beans. They got the beans opened, cooked them with their breath, and ate all the beans in front 
of the warm fire. Um, Dabble said this is Camp Lake Scatterwood. It is a summer camp for human children. They have been doing summer camps here since the 1920s. How do you know that? Corey asked. Dragons are born knowing things, Dabble said. Really? No, I read it off this plaque on the wall. So the humans are only here during the summer. Maybe we're safe then. My stomach doesn't feel so good, Corey said. Mine either. Those beans were heavy. Corey suddenly, this is where the kid humor comes in, Corey suddenly farted out a huge ball of fire. The dragon brothers laughed, then dabble farted a stream of fire into the air too. They had a contest to see who could fart the biggest fireballs. They were careful to aim into the fireplace so they wouldn't damage the Lake Scatterwood Dining Hall. No wonder human children Stink. Dabble said. They eat nothing but beans all summer. The dragons. Dragons decided to search the rest of the building. In a storage room behind the kitchen, they found all sorts of toys and books. 
There were sets for plays and all sorts, all kinds, let's say, of costumes. They moved on to the next room and found they moved to the next room and found the camp store. Shirts and other clothing was boxed up. Corey opened a few of the boxes and then said, hey, look at this. The dragons inspected all the brightly colored wrappers, Dabble said, candy. We should have searched here first. The dragons ate a ton of candy and their stomachs and their stomachs hurt worse, uh, they were full. They found a slushy machine and used the snow outside with the syrup to make themselves some more treats. That really hit the spot. Dabble said. They moved back to the fire to warm up. and used the sets and costumes to make themselves a little bedroom near the fireplace. They made up plays for each other. They ate more candy. They made up plays for each other. Hold on, let me fix that. This one's almost finished. They made up plays for each other. They ate more candy. They played old board games. They played ball. And they found some hot chocolate. That was easy to make. There were no marshmallows, though. I always misspell marshmallows. There were no marshmallows, though. 
they decided to have one more fireball farting contest before bed. As they settled into their new bedroom for the night, uh, Dabble said we should search the rest of the camp tomorrow. Winter might last a long time. We should be okay though. Today was a great birthday. I'm glad we were born in the winter, Dabble said. Corey agreed, and the winter dragons slept soundly in front of a fire. That night. All right, there we go.